Hello Biotechnicians. Today I have come up with a conceptual topic for the video which is enzymology, a very important unit from CSIR Net Life Sciences. We will look at the different mechanisms, kinetics and regulation. So it's an all-inclusive lecture where you will get to know the important concepts related with this topic. Let's dive in. What is an enzyme? We know enzymes are globular proteins which function as biological catalyst and they help up in speeding up the reaction rate. Catalyst is something which will facilitate the increase of the rate of reaction. How does enzyme do it? By lowering the activation of energy without being affected by the reaction that it will catalyze. I will tell you what is activation energy and how it is lowered. Enzymes catalyze nearly all the chemical reactions which take place in the cells of the body. And most important is that they have very unique 3D shapes and that is why they are very specific to the type of substrate which they are going to catalyze in a reaction. Okay, So these 3D shapes of enzymes, they complementary fit the shapes of the reactions. Have a look at the representation. We have the, the enzymes here are the 3D shapes of proteins mostly. And you have the substrate which can bond with complementary binding. Upon binding, there would be some stress which is created in the substrate which converts them into the products. Once the products are formed, the substrates will get released from the enzyme and enzyme is ready to bind another substrate immediately. Either this or maybe some substrates can bind to the active site. And together these substrates can be joined by forming a bond between them and once the product is formed then it gets released from the enzyme. That is how enzymes can catalyze a lot of substrates in a given time because they themselves are not altered as they are catalysts. They will only facilitate the rate of the reaction. However, there are some points over here which I will come to. First of all, how do enzymes work? Enzymes lower reactions activation energy. We know that all chemical reactions, they can't take place just like that. They all have a chemical barrier which is called as the activation energy. Why so? Why the name? Because the substrate, it is already stable in a form and if it has to be converted to product, then the bonds within the substrate, they need to be destabilized which means that it should go to something called as a transition state. And for that, the substrate needs to be activated, then only it can convert into the product. The energy required to get the substrate to the transition state, this is what is called activation energy. It varies from reaction to reaction. Some have high activation energy or some steps in an enzymatic reaction may have high en act activation energy. And in those cases, the reaction rate will be very slow. Okay, so you can imagine that if you have a hurdle race where the hurdle heights are very uh, high, then in a given moment of time, in a given amount of time, not many players will be able to reach the finish line. So you can say the rate of the race will be slow. But in, on the other hand, if you have hurdles which are very low high, then in a given time, many, uh, many people will be able to reach the finish line in the same amount of time. So this is exactly what happens in an enzymatic reaction. In a given amount of time, many substrates are converted into product. Okay, so activation energy is the amount of energy needed to disrupt the stable molecule so that reaction can take place. If you can see, this is the energy diagram showing the reaction coordinate where substrates are converted to products. And this is what is the energy uh, transactions between them. Now when the reaction begins, this is the ground state of the reactants. Without enzyme, they have to get this much activation energy without enzyme. Okay. Then only you can see it is converting into product. Overall, there will be release of some amount of energy, which is called as the free energy. Please note over here, very important point. Activation energy and free energy are two different things. Okay, so do not confuse the, between them. What is released from the reactant upon formation of product is the free energy. But what is required for the reactant in order to reach the transition state is activation energy. Okay, so this is the transition state. 
this particular free energy release it is a property of the reaction based on the ground state of reactant and ground state of product this amount of energy will vary from uh, reaction to reaction in some of them lot of free energy will be released upon conversion for example atp hydrolysis when you break atp uh, when atp is broken with the help of water molecule lot of energy is released and that's why we call those reactions as exergonic reactions okay but however uh, it does not mean that since it is a spontaneous reaction then in that case atp will never exist atp will always break down into AT adp right but that doesn't happen the reason is because there is a chemical barrier to atp only if atp gets the activation energy then only it will convert into adp so this is how where enzymes come into picture if any reaction has very high activation energy uh, if you use enzymes the amount of activation energy which is needed to reach the transition state is lowered this is the main function of enzymes and because of that uh, very easily many substrates can cross this amount and convert into product okay some important properties of enzymes they will only catalyze thermodynamically possible reaction so what does this mean thermodynamically possible as i said uh, we have this exergonic reaction which is spontaneous it happens by itself okay but we have if we have a, a chemical equilibrium equilibrium means where the reaction rate uh, forward reaction and uh, reverse reaction rate becomes equal to each other uh, so there the, you won't see any more conversion uh, any more change in the concentration of substrate to product okay so in that case if you have uh, let's say a reaction whose chemical equilibrium is uh, two substrates and uh, eight products okay initially you started with 10 substrates and zero product but at the end of the equilibrium you have something like this it does not mean that if you use enzyme uh, you will convert all substrate into product no that is not possible because this is the equilibrium of the reaction okay so it will not catalyze th this is thermodynamically impossible so it will catalyze only thermodynamically possible reactions and also it does not change the position of equilibrium and direction of the reaction looking at this particular equilibrium we can easily comment that this is an exergonic reaction which favors the formation of the product so here it will not change the position or equilibrium and it is reusable that means it is not altered or consumed during the reaction okay and they will usually form by act, act by forming a transient complex with the reactant thus stabilizing the transition state also the catalytic behavior of any enzyme it will depend upon the primary secondary tertiary or quaternary structure what you can see here is the complementary binding of a substrate and an enzyme and you can very well imagine that the active site or the place where the substrate binds to the enzyme it is only a small part of the entire 3d structure now moving on to the kinetics part uh, we all know that there will be some factors which will affect enzyme properties so one of them is the inhibitors activators the different regulation which i'll cover shortly and another factor is the substrate concentration and the enzyme concentration see if we keep enzyme concentration fixed let's say these are the amount of enzymes that are present in the reaction now the rate of reaction um, will keep on changing based on the substrate concentration so there will be three stages of it in the first stage uh, where the substrate concentration is comparatively low with regard to uh, its other time high concentration so at that time the substrate uh, with the increase of the substrate the initial velocity will also increase provided the enzyme concentration is constant okay as we increase little bit of amount of substrate okay so uh, so accordingly the initial velocity will also increase then comes the second stage so at the second stage you will see with increase of substrate you are not getting that much increase in the velocity okay so it has become decreasing a uh, little bit in a less increasing manner okay it is not increasing as high as before then is the third stage where you don't see any increase at all in the reaction velocity even if you increase the substrate the reaction velocity has come to a stagnant basically we can say it has become constant okay now this is what is the maximum 
activity where all the enzyme molecules are already occupied with substrate and they are uh, working at their full capacity okay that is why even if you have more substrates but the substrates don't have any enzyme to act upon because you have kept the enzyme concentration fixed so this is where we will say the enzyme has reached its maximum velocity maximum activity happens when the substrate concentration will be very high okay this is where the substrate concentration if it is very high you will get maximum activity and that is that occurs when the enzyme is saturated means all the enzymes are binding the substrate so when we have equations describing enzyme kinetics we should start with a mechanistic model uh, for uh, and we we can identify the constraints and assumptions because all enzyme concept because all reactions will not follow the same assumptions okay in fact some assumptions they do not follow this michaelis menten kinetics then we have to do the algebra some calculations and finally we have to solve for velocity and what is the relation with the substrate right so when we have michaelis menten kinetic we should select the simplest enzyme mechanism so uh, one reactant one intermediate and one product now this is what we have our simplistic model where enzyme and substrate gives you enzyme substrate complex and uh, uh, it is a reversible reaction so as i said we have to have some constraints and assumptions so first assumption is that the enzyme uh, is reversible okay the first re first step is reversible because of which you have this particular sign these are by the way rate constants which will tell you how fast the reaction is taking place okay so if you have the rate constant high value it means the reaction is very fast if your rate constant is less it means it is slower reaction okay then we have uh, es converting into e plus p here you will see that this is not reversible so this is one more assumption that once the product is formed it will not come back to the uh to the enzyme substrate complex form right and this is another uh, rate constant for the conversion of this right and it is not necessary that these two rate constants will be same right so they will take place at different pace or different uh, rate and in fact this is one more assumption of mm kinetics that k1 and k minus 1 and k minus 1 is what it is the reverse reaction rate since it is reverse reaction rate that is why the value will be same however the uh, sign will be opposite okay so this is one of the assumption that k1 and k minus 1 are much much more than k2 this is one more assumption of mm kinetics so first step as i said uh, the enzyme and substrate reversibly and quickly form a non covalent complex which means that these are very fast that is why these values are very high second step is es complex undergoes a chemical transformation and dissociates to give product an enzyme okay now here if we have to look that the substrate converting into product this is a very fast reaction and this is a slow reaction so we can call this reaction as rate limiting step okay now what is a rate limiting step even if the substrate is able to form es but it cannot convert into product it has to still wait for the es to break down into product so entire velocity it depends upon how much of k2 how much of es is present concentration of es and with how much rate it is getting broken down so v is equal to k2 es many enzymatic reactions follow michaelis menten uh, kinetics even though there are some which are more complicated than this okay and for real enzymatic reactions we don't use k2 we will instead use the word k cat which stands for turnover number it represents the rate constant of the rate limiting step rate limiting step means the slowest step so if k cat value is high it would mean the rate constant of the slowest step is also very high it means that even the slowest step is very fast which means that overall reaction is going to be very fast so k cat is also called as turnover number now turnover number k cat it means that as in business it represents how much is the business turnover so how many substrates are getting converted into product per given time which can be in minutes or in seconds so it is a first order rate constant okay 
So K cat and reaction velocity I just mentioned that uh, the velocity will be equal to the K2 and the concentration of ES. Okay. Now don't forget the enzyme is uh, either free or it is bound that is in the form of ES. That means the total enzyme would be ES plus E. Isn't it? Now when we take sufficiently high concentration of substrate. So, our equation will change. V is equal to K2 ES will change. At very high substrate concentration, try to recollect the graph which I showed you. V will become V max at a very high, high concentration, right? K2 we can write as K cat and at very high substrate, all the enzymes are occupied with enzyme. All the enzymes are occupied with substrate, which means ES you can write as ET, which is total enzyme. Okay, so this is also very important equation V max is equal to K cat ET. You can find different uh, terms from this equation, right? So if K cat is given and V max is given, you can find out ET. So this is a very important reaction equation for enzyme kinetics questions. K cat is the number of moles of substrate converted to product per time per active site. Okay. MM kinetics assumptions as I just told you that K1 and K-1 it is the first step which we consider it as very fast and is always at equilibrium. The other thing which we consider is that the uh, change of ES that means how much ES concentration will change with respect to time it will be zero. That means we have to assume it the system is at steady state. So, DES means the change of ES which is rate of formation of ES. So, what is rate of formation of ES? It depends on the free enzyme concentration, then free substrate concentration and the rate at which it gets converted that is K1. Free enzyme we can write it as total enzyme minus ES, S and K1. So, this is the rate of formation of ES. Free enzyme uh, total enzyme and how many of them are bonded with substrate. If you subtract, you will get how many are still free. Rate of breakdown of ES, it would depend upon the uh, ES conversion because it breaks down into uh, this side also. So, it will depend upon K2 into ES, okay, with how much rate it is breaking down and it is also breaking down this side. So, you have to also write K minus 1 into ES. That is with how much rate it is breaking down on the other side. There is a single reaction dissociation step that means K2 is equal to K cat. We also have to ignore this um, back reaction of P2 ES as I told you. So we will we can ignore the term K minus 2. Now from these two equations that we got rate of formation of ES and rate of breakdown of ES we can calculate the mm equation i am not going into the uh, explanation of how we are getting that equation but however if you solve these two that means we have the rate of formation and rate of breakdown you can equate both of them because uh, it is a steady state assumption so if you solve this then you will get this particular form okay the only problem over here is that we don't have any velocity term over here. So, what we can do is we can use these equations which we just found some time back. V0 is equal to K2 into ES and V max is equal to K2 into ET. Now, what will be V0? V0 uh, we have to get ES over here. So, v ES will be V0 by K2. So, if you write V0 by K2 and instead of ET if you write V max by K2, right? K2, K2 will get cancelled and this is what is your MM equation for one substrate catalyzed reactions. Again, it is very important uh, in uh, CSIR exam for numerical questions. Okay. And another thing uh, what I wanted to show you in the graph is that KM. KM is the Michaelis maintain. Uh, it is the Michaelis constant. So, we know that Vmax is the highest maximum activity that an, that an enzyme at a fixed concentration can have, okay, at very high substrate concentration. So, if we take half of the maximum velocity and uh, take, extrapolate this on the graph, we will get a certain value on the substrate concentration. 
and this particular value is km so what is km it is equivalent to kd which is dissociation constant and it represents the km represents the substrate concentration which is required to achieve half of vmax okay so this is what is the km and the enzyme kinetics if you want to draw a graph michaelis maintain kinetics then it will come to a rectangle hyperbola okay but however this is very difficult to interpret that is why a line weaver berg plot uh, is also there which is a straight line graph equation now for this one why do we say double reciprocal plot because for michaelis maintain we are plotting the graph for v0 against substrate concentration but for this one we are plotting it 1 by v0 against 1 by substrate concentration so that is why we have taken the reciprocal on both sides and this equation it is falling in the form of y is equal to mx plus c which is a straight line graph uh, equation okay y whatever we have in this place we will take in the y axis whatever in this place we will take in the x axis c stands for the x intercept y intercept that means the graph wherever it is cutting the y axis this is y intercept and x intercept is wherever it is cutting the x x axis okay m represents the slope that means how much inclined it is towards the y axis so if it is more inclined towards y axis it would mean that the slope is more so now last section of this is reversible enzyme inhibition mechanisms inhibitor is something which can bind to an enzyme and prevent the formation of es complex or break down it to e plus p of an enzyme catalyzed reaction basically it is any ligand that can reduce the velocity upon binding to the enzyme and reversible inhibitors after combining with enzyme they will form a complex called as ei which can rapidly dissociate enzyme is inactive only when bound to inhibitor that is why these are called as reversible inhibitors because once the inhibitor is lost from the enzyme the enzyme will be active once again and that that is possible because ei complex is held together by weak non covalent interactions there are three basic types of reversible inhibition which is competitive uncompetitive and non competitive i will show all these three in a diagrammatic representation so as you can see here for competitive the substrate and the inhibitor compete for the same active site that's why if you have more of substrate uh, you can reverse the inhibition activity the rate of inhibition can be lower and uh, the reason why it is competitive because both bind to the same active site and uh, this means that they will have a structure which is similar to each other non com in in that case uh, only three complex only two complexes are possible one is the ei complex another one is esi complex since they are binding at the same place a uh, ternary complex which is esi complex is not possible for competitive inhibition inhibitor binds to free enzyme only and competes with substrate increasing substrate overcomes inhibition by inhibitor non competitive inhibitor here so the enzyme will have two different sites for binding of substrate and binding of inhibitor at a different site but here there they can bind individually uh, so you can form enzyme substrate also you can form enzyme inhibitor also and in fact all the three can also bind together okay so all the three complex is possible however in uncompetitive if the substrate is not bound to enzyme then for uncompetitive if the substrate is not bound to enzyme inhibitor cannot come and bind okay but if the substrate is bound to the enzyme then only inhibitor can come and bind this is the difference with non competitive so here it is called as uncompetitive here only it is uh, possible is es complex and esi complex ei complex is not possible in uncompetitive so it can bind only with es because upon binding the substrate there is some conformational changes in the enzyme because of which only ei complex is possible this also changes the different plots and uh, the kinetics of uh, the enzymatic activity so the line weaver berg plot 
and the Michaelis maintain graph also changes. So try to remember that even the Vmax and Km value also changes. For competitive, Vmax remains unchanged but Km is increased as there is competition between the substrate and inhibitor for binding to the same site. In uncompetitive, uh, both Vmax and Km will be decreased and in non-competitive, Vmax is decreased however Km would be increased. Example of competitive inhibitor is malonate and succinate dehydrogenase because you can see they have mostly similar structure. If succinate binds, you will get the fumarate which is product but if malonate comes and binds, then the enzyme is competitively inhibited. So, this is an example of competitive inhibitor. Okay. Regulation of enzyme activity, either it can be controlled by controlling the amount of enzyme which is synthesized. So, uh, we can alter the rate of enzyme synthesis and degradation, induction and repression control can be done or else we can alter the catalytic efficiency of the enzyme. So, we have allosteric control, feedback inhibition, pro-enzyme, protein-protein interaction, uh, some covalent modification like phosphorylation or the proteolytic activation where some cleavage of the protein will be done and it, it can be made into activated. These all are different regulation. Regulation of enzyme activity is needed for an enzyme's um, homeostasis, okay, like in the homeostasis in the cell for the proper mechanism of enzyme. Sometimes it has to increase, sometimes it has to decrease. Now, when we talk about allosteric enzymes, they have a second regulatory site which is called as allosteric site and they are different from the active site. Allosteric enzymes contain more than one polypeptide chain and they usually have quaternary structure. Allosteric modulators, they bind non-covalently to allosteric site and they will regulate the enzyme activity via some conformational changes. Please make a note that allosteric enzymes do not follow michaelis maintain equation, right? So, we have two type of modulators, one is inhibitors and activators. What are these negative modulator or inhibitor? When these bind to the allosteric site, so as you can see this is active site, allosteric enzymes have a different site apart from active site. Now if the inhibitor comes and binds over here, then substrate cannot come and bind to the active site. That way enzyme will be inhibited. So this type is generally happens at the end product uh, which is also feedback inhibition I am going to tell you next. And positive modulator, it is an activator where if this activator comes and binds to the enzyme at a different site, then the conformation of the active site changes such that the substrate is able to bind in a better way. So, this is where the activation of the enzyme uh, uh, quality will take place. Usually, it will act as the substrate of the reaction, right. For example, you have this phosphofructokinase in um, glycolysis where you have separate binding site for the inhibitor which is ATP and separate binding site for the activator which is AMP. Since ATP and AMP are from a similar pool, uh, they if the concentration of one is high, the other will be less. So, in case ATP is high, it will come and bind to the enzyme PFK and change the active site such that the substrate will not be able to bind. And in case the AMP is more, then ATP site will be unoccupied and AMP will make a different conformational change in the active site such that the substrate will be even binding better. Okay. So, these are different allosteric enzyme examples for different metabolic pathways. And last is feedback inhibition which is generally observed in biosynthetic pathways which in which the enzyme will be inhibited by an end product of the metabolic pathway in which it is involved. So, this often takes place at the committed step in a pathway. However, this will not affect the enzyme quantity. For example, A gets converted into B, C, D and to Z. So, the Z can come and inhibit one of the early enzymes when where A was getting converted into B. Or you can have multiple feedback pathways from which A, B, C, from here we will have Y and Z. So, Z can come and inhibit the E3 and Y can come and inhibit the E3 star. Likewise, you have different, different feedback inhibition pathways like uh, concerted, cumulative. By looking at the diagram, you can figure out whether both the end products will be required to inhibit the uh, 
uh, early products early enzyme or only one of them is required so based on that you have different categories even these type of questions are very important for csir that was all for enzymology you have to study more from standard reference books to get a good grasp on this topic thank you everyone for paying attention